And uh, 20 years later, he's still driving me around. And um, I had no idea then of the skill that he had in building something like this. It's, uh, it's just fantastic. It's also a tribute to all of the Gracies and their extended families. I really can't go into names of Jim and Herbert and Urchin and Peter and Brian and, and not forgetting um, Heather and Trudy and Janice either, who had to put up with the got a bit tough from time and uh, always really there with a cup of tea. Um, the Gracie name is an interesting name. It actually comes from the 12th century and it means go with grace. And I think that sums it up pretty well, but I don't know if you know Gracie's. It's also a First Fleet convict name. I don't know if you came over with that lot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as far as I know, Jack Gracie was the first Gracie to come into the Canimbla Valley. And um, he came down from Armadale. And um, he was brought here because he was such a great horseman. And uh, sadly, this gene has not been passed through. Um, in fact, we think there might be a bit of a hidden agenda with this crossing because we know Peter's preference for a bike. The bike can't swim. And so uh, we can get the uh, get the cattle back if they stray much more quickly. Um, it's really great for us to be here because I don't know if you know, Canimbla is the Aboriginal word for tribal warfare ground, and um, we've <laughs> we've actually found the tribes here. Our tribe has found these tribes all warm and friendly, and uh, we're very young here because we've only notched up two generations. But on second thought, I'm really glad the Graces are on our side. Um, I especially urchin. <laughs> <laughs> so this this bridge is sort of a, a reflection of all the generations that things have been handed down. They do things their way. Peter does what Brian says. Brian does what Arthur told him. I'm sure Arthur told did what Jack told him to do. This bridge actually went up in nine months. So it's had a, a really normal gestation period. It, um, it has some, some very good statistics. I'll read them out to you because it's quite interesting. It's 90 yards long. It has an average depth of 1.4 metres. I find that hard to believe because I've seen how deep it is. And when you see Jim Brady down, you can hardly see the top of his head. You can imagine the amount of concrete that's underneath there. 250 tonnes of rocks. 13 sets of pipes, two of them actually weigh eight and a half tons, um, 2,000 sandbags, 383 cubic meters of concrete, and that's not with your ready mix pioneer truck either, that's done in a piece of equipment that goes back before the Second World War, and the concrete was hand shoveled into it. <laughs> So it's been a mind-boggling exercise with all sorts of obstacles coming up and uh, Kim and I had come down here and shake our heads and say, I just don't believe that, you know, how they're going to get over this. And we'd always look at them and one of the Gracies would say the, what's almost their slogan, which is, uh, no, it'll be right. <laughs> and it sure is. So now it's with great honour that I would like to open this bridge and wish Peter a very, very happy 30th birthday. <laughs>
Because I have a moustache, the water kept filling up. <laughs> and I could see the water doing this and so I'm going, oh my god, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. And I kept pushing the top.
they were going to think that it was thinking of putting a Dan just down here on our on Alistair. Yeah. And they changed them on and went somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Where we were standing would have been underwater. Just here? Yeah. Yeah, up the shore. the dam was in. Yeah, in fact, we had some guy come round at 9 o'clock on a Sunday telling us that if they did put a dam in, the water would be up so high at 9 o'clock on a Sunday.